they're super comfortable. You don't have plumbers crack all day because they stay up. Oh, uh, right. You don't know. Yep. Yeah. They are. They're just, they're, I, I've always had the theory, how come women are the only ones that can be dressed comfortably? Yeah. I mean, leggings are awesome. They're awesome. I, I think it might be because guys are a little embarrassed of, uh, you know, showing their package out there. That might be part of it. What do you think? That was Tom Ski describing the benefits of tights, a.k.a. compression pants, a.k.a. long johns. Back to business today on the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. Welcome to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, where you discover tips, tricks, and tools from the leading names in fly fishing today. Hey, how's it going today? Thanks for stopping by the Fly Fishing Show. Did you know that uh, you can leave a quick uh, rating on Spotify? If you are listening to Spotify right now, we would definitely appreciate it. We need a couple of ratings. Uh, a couple of people who are listening on Spotify uh, who have listened a few times, and then they can leave a rating to get the party started. So if you get a chance, we'd appreciate if you've listened to the show, been enjoying it, a uh, five-star review would be amazing. Uh, if you could uh, help out the show today and help uh, us find some more people, and share some of this uh, this good content we have coming in 22. This year we're going to have some, it's going to be the biggest year ever. Uh, so I'm excited to share that with you uh, coming up this year. This episode is sponsored by the Fly Fishing Film Tour. The Fly Fishing Film Tour is back. Don't miss it this year as 2022 is the year of the return. F3T will be in a theater near you. Just check out uh, wetflyswing.com slash F3T to find a show near you. Lots of good stuff. Check it out, wetflyswing.com slash F3T. Or you can just head over to flyfilmtour.com right now. Tom Ski is back here to give us another round of uh, a little bit of a business round here. We're going to talk a little business and fly fishing, a little travel, uh, company creation, uh, we, we tend to, to talk, it's been a while since Tom's been on, so we tend to go all over the place. This one is definitely uh, a unique one, so uh, check it out today. We're going to talk about, uh, we're going to get into some hiking equipment, uh, so a little uh, tip that uh, Tom uses with his bag and his pad. Uh, we get an update on the show season coming up, where what's going on there, where Tom's going to be, where I'm going to be. And we also get you a little SEO uh, tip at the end, so if you've got... Uh, a brand out there you're trying to grow your website tom uh, brings some good stuff there including a good resource that you'll want to check out if you need some help if you're trying to diy that yourself right now seo is always a huge a huge player a huge thing to grow your brand online and something that everybody should be doing so without further ado here is tom ski how's it going tom that's going good dave how are you doing today Good, good. We had you on um, way back in March of uh, 2020. So now we're going on two years. Does it, does it feel like two years to you? It's blown by really quickly, even with COVID. I mean, I went out and spent six weeks on the road when everybody else was in lockdown fishing and visiting and you know, going all over the Rocky Mountain West and all the way into Seattle and back to Montana. But, oh, yeah. uh, you know, it's been an adventure. Yeah. How was that? So that was the trip. Uh, this is the thing you kind of recorded on your YouTube channel. Or what was this this road trip? Yeah, I was on my YouTube channel. Yeah, I would, went over and uh, hung out at Whiting Farms for a few days and then went to Salt Lake and fished with a, one of the guys there and then went to Salmon, Idaho and hung out and fished and then went to uh, Sandpoint and uh, fished a few days up there with Doug and slam the cutthroat that was probably the best best part oh, wow. of the trip west slope cutties uh yeah we boated yeah. uh 80 fish in a day and a half and they were all between 14 and 22 inches oh wow yep those west slopes are aggressive all on dries all on dries and yeah. you could watch them coming up from the bottom from six to eight feet down it was yeah freaking cool that's amazing yeah, that's cool. So you got a lot going on always whenever we, we catch up every once in a while and, you know, talk a little about the business stuff. And since we've uh, talked back in 2020, you know, we had talked about some stuff and you've got, um, I want to dig into a little bit on the travel and uh, some of the trips and some of the, you know, stuff you have going. So I don't know, even know where we start when you 
talk, maybe let's talk, tell people what you do. You know, what is your focus these days? Because I know you're, you love the social media. You love the SEO. Talk about kind of what keeps up like your normal week. Uh, my normal week is I'm usually doing social media and uh, SEO pretty much uh, nonstop every day, a minimum of four hours a day. Yep. You know, that's just for companies that I work for. And, and the big thing with social, like you and I were talking about earlier, is you got to be social. And that's the reason most people don't get yeah. anything done or don't get any growth, don't make any sales online, um, anything like that. We actually had a good Christmas season. Um, yeah, we actually broke records this Christmas with online sales. Hmm. But, uh, nice. You know, but it, it's, it's staying out there and doing it. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, still, it's awesome just engaging. Yeah. You know, like I said earlier, I mean, on every account I run, you know, I, I engage with at least 100 people a day You do, on every account. Yep. So that's that's 300 to 400 people that I drop a note to, talk to, you know, interact with their posting, them personally, mm -hmm. whatever. It, you just got to do it. Yep. And you're just kind of searching around, looking for people that are interesting to you, you know, whatever good, cool picks or whatever. And you're just kind of shooting a DM and, and just, and that's it. And then you get a, a certain percentage of those, a quarter, a third of those people who are kind of following back. Yeah, exactly. Interacting, buying, asking questions about the companies that I work for, uh, mm -hmm. things like that. Even ad sales for the magazines. It's, uh, you know, it's it's really interesting. Subscribers as well for the magazines because our That's magazines right. are still in print, you yeah. know, which is you know a rarity these days, and and we're seeing growth. So that's yeah. that's the other cool thing about it. Yeah, you're seeing growth, and then you're going into you're growing into the like we said the travel stuff, getting into a little more of that. Talk about that just a little bit. You know, I know it's. Uh, uh, you're kind of like hot into it. Uh, tell us what you think that is looking like for you guys over the next, say, you know, couple of years. What, what, what do you have going there? Um, I think over the next couple of years, um, I honestly believe that within the next 18 months, we'll be up to doing uh, 20 hosted trips a year, if not more. Um, right now, we've got uh, seven booked into the Caribbean, everywhere from Belize to uh, the flats in Mexico to the Bahamas and even Puerto Rico. Um, and then, uh, we've got another one going to South Alaska for, for wild steelhead, a hundred percent wild steelhead, uh, videos will be posted this next week and we'll be starting to do bookings there. And, and the fish are incredible. They're 16 to 20 pounders, all wild. It's all walk and wade and it's, inc it's incredible. And then the other really cool trip we've got coming up this fall is, uh, is sea run brown trout to a lodge in Denmark, which oh, wow, I'm, to Denmark to Denmark. Yep. So oh, we're going to, we're going to expand out and, uh, get a, uh, a global, uh, a global travel thing going on. And what's, what's the difference between us and, um, other people like, well, yellow dog and some of the others in the industry is they're all travel agencies. Yeah. We're a media company. Uh, when we do trips with lodges, they get, uh, they get, they get content in our magazines, they get ads, they get photos, they get videos. I mean, we, we totally take care of them and help promote them on a year round, uh, mm -hmm. basis to, to keep things going. And these trips, a lot of these trips, uh, we've been running them for four years now and we're going back to the same places, the same weeks, uh, and we're filling up. It's not an issue. First class trips, especially the Caribbean trips, uh, we do a chartered flight out of uh, out of Fort Lauderdale, and it's a it's a private small jet. You get on, you're served champagne. These these are all first class trips. There you go. No, that's amazing. I think that's the uh, uh, we had um, you know talking about Denmark or well Norway. We had Erlin uh, uh, Nielsen on. He's kind of the um, He's like the expert uh, Norway, right? Team Norway, and we talked about a little bit about Sea Run Browns and and just lo even local. I mean, their native Browns up there, up in the in the hills, is pretty amazing. So, um, I mean, that's the cool thing about fly fishing. I'm excited about because it's become this worldwide thing. I can't imagine there's a place in the world you couldn't go and catch a fish on a fly. What do you think about that? Oh, totally. Um, I was amazed, and, and I just learned this not that long ago about the brown trout fishing in Kenya. Oh, in Kenya. Wow. 
Yeah, it's it's a big thing. There's guys running trips out of there down there out of England and it's it's a big deal. And I didn't even realize that um, before they were ever introduced in the U.S. in uh, 18, what was it, 1870, whatever, into Michigan and then into New York, uh, they were actually put in Kenya before then in the high mountain regions. Oh, wow. There you go. That's amazing. Yeah. So so basically, and I love what you mentioned, too, about the media, you know, the difference is that you guys are a media company first, which is, a, you know, that's a big thing people are looking to. Like we said, how do you get your name out there? How do you grow your business? If you're able to come to some of these companies or whoever, you know, your partners and say, hey, we'll, we'll get you out to these, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of people, whatever it is, you know what I mean? That's that's a, and you get content. So you're actually getting some photos along the way. Right. Yeah. yeah and I'm a pretty close to what I would be calling an SEO expert anymore. So, you know, your content and everything that goes online, which is written differently than it is for, for print. And it has to be set up differently on the website. It definitely brings an ROI and a value. There's just no doubt about it. You will get bookings from it. That's cool. Yeah. And this, and this episode for those listening is going to be a little more like your last one. You know, I think the title was, I can't remember, but I think it was kind of on the title of, you know, monetizing, you know, we talked about the similar things, you know, monetizing your business. So this is going to be on the same lines a little bit here. So, um, and I know we, we definitely have a lot of people who listen in, who have brands, you know, businesses in the fly fishing space. So, so I think this is, this is definitely cool. Um, well let's, let's keep on the, on the track of the, the travel, because I'm, I'm curious to hear about a couple more of these trips. So what is your, so you got a bunch of these things going on, 20 uh, trips or whatever, what does it look like for you to put these together? I mean, when you say hosted trip, does that mean that you're going on all 20 of these trips or how does that look? No, it, it doesn't. Um, Joe, the owner of the Mag- Tail and Strong magazine is going on some of these. Uh, Ryan, who is the editor at uh, Strong magazine, he's actually putting together some cast and blast stuff for down in Texas for mm-hmm. redfish and ducks and oh, nice. upland birds as well. He'll be going on those. And I believe I'm going on the Alaska trip and I'm working on a couple of other Rocky Mountain ones that I will I will go on. And Joe has indicated that he'd like me to do one of the saltwater trips as well. So yep. I probably will do that. Yep. And the way that works is this like a typical hosted trip. I mean, typically you go to say, and this is probably not the way you're doing it, but you go to the a company, a lodge or something like that and say, Hey, you know, uh, let's do a hosted trip. I will bring you five clients. And then, then I kind of go along for free sort of thing. How is it different from that sort of deal? Well, it, it's along those lines, but you got to understand that even like yellow dog takes a percentage of the gross revenue, uh, mm-hmm. from the lodges, which we do as well. Our fees aren't as high as theirs. And, and other than that, it's pretty much the same as what you just described. Yeah, pretty much the same. So this is a so this is a hosted trip thing. So out of those trips, these are all hosted, and and essentially, yeah, the, the lodge is getting you know they're getting more clients, which is great. And then and then you're obviously getting to go on a cool trip and then do some of the promote. How do you do the like the promotional the uh, videos, photos? How does all that come together? Who's taking that? Usually, the hosts on the trip were all pretty accomplished photographers. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Ryan really is. I guess I really am too. Um, you know, Joe and a couple of other guys are, yeah, they're, they're okay. They're, they're good. Um, yep. you know, the photos aren't shoddy or anything like that. They're all high res, high quality photo shot with good cameras. Yep. And, and then we just take and put that stuff out, create ads. I put it up on social media and, and we have a pretty large, uh, extensive social network that we, uh, that we use. I mean, Strung and Tail have got their own internal network and then, I have an external network that I built uh, over the years since 2009 that I have 400,000 uh, followers that are just uh, fishing and hunting. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So that, you know, that makes a huge difference. Yeah, that's right. And talk about this uh, this Denmark trip. So how did this come to be? Because that seems like the one that's kind of maybe the furthest away. Or is that is that the most remote compared to uh, of what you're doing? Um, yeah, actually, it, it really is. And definitely the furthest away. Um, the Alaska one's pretty remote. I, I can't get into where that's at. Just, oh, yeah. Secret. Top secret. Yeah, that's kind yeah. of top <laughs> secret unless you're booking. And, yeah. and videos will be online um, next week for all of this. And where will they be online? Where can they see these? 
Um, you'll be able to find them on the Tail Magazine at tailflyfishing.com. We will okay. have them there, and then I'll be putting them in social posts and things like that as well. Okay, perfect. So you're going to be heading. And then Denmark, What um, is that something that you're, I mean, how do you coordinate that? So you call, you, is this a lodge over there you're working with? Yes, it's a lodge, and this all came together through uh, through Morton from uh, and uh, Morton and uh, Steve Silverero from oh, yeah. Rachel Vice and uh, Eric's Hooks actually mm-hmm. helped put all this together. And this is a really nice lodge right on the right on the sea up there, and mm-hmm. a river right next to it. And we just kind of uh, we're doing such a good job with these other ones; it just kind of fell into place. Oh, it did. Yeah, is the best way to put it. We didn't uh, we didn't go out pursuing it. They actually came to us. No kidding. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. Well, what else do you have going is from the you know staying on the travel perspective? How do you see this looking? Say it, it does take it in the next uh, right now. It's kind of early two thousand you know twenty two. You know, you've still got a little bit of the COVID stuff going. First of all, is that is that an issue? Let's talk about for those who haven't traveled much. How, how much of an issue is that in planning? Um, this year, that seems like it's turning out to maybe be a little bit more of an issue. I mean, the thing that helps us is we've got, you know, a chartered flight. We run into the Caribbean and, and Mexico, but going to Alaska and Denmark, you know, we're, everybody's going to have to be booking their own flights to go there. And that could be a little tricky with all the cancellations that have been going on because of, you know, well, right, weather's been part of it, but COVID's been a major part of it as well. Now, the Alaska stuff we put together, one of the gentlemen we put this together with, his wife works for Alaska Airlines, and she will help us coordinate the trips for everybody that wants to go so that uh, it'll make it a lot easier for getting up there. That's perfect. You know, then once you get there, you know, we all got to arrive on the same day and then we're taking a float plane over to, over to the island where we're going. Oh, gotcha. So, and you mentioned the trip, take us to that, that West Slope Cuddy trip. Now, where was that again? Uh, that was in Northern Idaho. I really don't want to oh, no. mention the stream. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, we don't <laughs> want to give any secrets there either. No, we'd make people mad if we did that. Um, but I'm curious on your travel. So what did you do there? You went on like, was this a hiking fishing trip you did camping trip? Um, yeah, it was. Um, I just did, uh, I had closed everything up in Colorado, put it in storage, um, and, uh, took off to, uh, go meet a bunch of the pro team members from Whiting Farms and mm-hmm. just wanted to spend six weeks out fishing. Cause originally I was going to go out, I had a Pacific Crest Trail permit and I was going to go, friends of mine were hiking the Pacific Crest Trail all the way through and I was going to go join them and do sections and run logistics for them. But some of the people couldn't get here from Germany because COVID hit, mm. you know, that March. And yep. other people couldn't even get off the East Coast to get to California. California wasn't being real receptive to the hikers on the trail. So right. everybody decided to bag it. So I had already put everything in storage and gotten rid of my apartment and everything and just decided, well, I'm just going to spend six weeks on the road and fish and hike and video and just do what I want to do. And, and I wasn't worried about COVID and, uh, it it was a great time. I had Moab was awesome. In fact, what was really interesting about Moab and I left uh, Memorial day. So everybody gets an idea of the time frame, and, uh, the, the campgrounds were full. And what was really interesting, like in one of the campgrounds that I stayed at over there in Moab, uh, there was a guy from Wisconsin and, and me and everybody else was from California. <laughs> it was just kind of funny. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the whole time I was in Moab, like all the bars were open. And oh, wow. And in that time frame, with all those people there, they'd only had 11 recorded cases of COVID at that time. Huh. Crazy. It was crazy. And there was all yeah. these people running around. None of us were wearing masks. Uh, you know, <laughs> we were going out. And even when I went to, to Northern Idaho, same situation. I was going to brew pubs with live music. Mind you, the music wasn't in the bar. They had it out back outside, set yeah. the tables up outside, you know, so it was lots of fresh yeah. air flowing through, but sure. It's hard to figure out. Awesome time. It was the only time I ran into lockdowns and weird stuff is when I got to Seattle. Because that's yeah, when that's right. <laughs> the group took over downtown Seattle, and oh, I couldn't right. wait to get out of there. That was just that was Strangeville, man. It was 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I know. There was some. There's been some weird stuff. No, I think it's hard. Everybody has a hard time figuring out kind of what's you know what's going on, what's what's truth, what's you know what to do. You know what I mean? It's like all the way down to like the um, you know the booster shots and stuff. All this the stuff that's going on. But I think bottom line is you got out and did you do like kind of a backcountry? Were you actually hiking in the backcountry doing that sort of thing, or more camping out of your car? Um, I did camping out of the car, but I did a little bit of backcountry hiking and stuff. I mean, probably one of my fatal mistakes was is I got to Sam in Idaho, and I threw on the backpack and took off for two days there, and it never got above 40 degrees and snowed on me every oh, nice. day. So, there you go. <laughs> like, well, what sort of tent? Did you have a pretty nice tent? Um, yeah, I have. A, I use a climate gear. I really like those guys out of uh, Utah. Oh, is that with a K? Climate with a K? Yeah, with a K. And uh, yeah, I have uh, the 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 Max Canyon. I have the two and the four person one. And then they've got probably for the money the best zero degree bag on the market. Oh, really? Oh, I love that thing. I mean, okay. I've been out that thing at below zero and been just toasty. Is this a down bag? Um, it's a down and synthetic mix. Oh, it's both. Yeah, it's a KSB uh, Zero is the is a brand. I have it on my web. You can buy it off my website or off from them. Oh, okay. And what's your and remind us again your website? Trailofhighways.com. Okay, yeah, of highways. So basically, you do you feel like with what you have going, you're pretty dialed into the, you know, the camping. You you know that you've got a good set of gear to use if you're going to go out in the backcountry. Oh yes, totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I use, I have an Osprey pack. Um, and I, I like other, I've used other manufacturers as well. And, yeah. but the Osprey just fits me the best. You know, you got to go with what fits you the best. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's go to that. This is a, I, I love this stuff because I'm kind of a gear nerd. It sounds like you kind of are too. Oh, totally. Um, <laughs> so if we're going, we're getting our stuff set up. I'd love to hear kind of your gear. So you got the, uh, the, the climate gear, which is cool because I think that's a, a pack uh, or a tent that maybe a lot don't know about the, and then what's the Max Canyon? That's Max Canyon. How do you spell that? Yeah. Max K M A X K A N Y O N. That's a climate tent. Oh, wow. I love that. It's Max Canyon because Max Canyon, for those that know, we have a connection over here to Max Canyon, an area, a location, you know, on the Deschutes yeah. that I have some family history of, but, and it was Max Canyon. It was a big, in fact, there's a steelhead pattern in the Max Canyon, right? There is. I've tied several of them. So that's it. So that's the, uh, so that's the fly that Max Canyon. For those that don't know, I always love. I I don't sprinkle this in too often, but that was a fly back in the old days. My dad created, and uh, and it's kind of a known. Oh, wow, the orange and black was yep. a cool color for. You don't see a lot of orange steelhead type flies, or at least you didn't back then in the seventies. Yeah, very very few. So Max Canyon. So then um, and then Osprey is the pack. What about take us to your uh, take us to your boots? Oh, uh, my boots. I'm a I'm a huge mural fan, but I don't yeah. wear boots. Oh, you don't? What do you do? Hiking sh- or uh, runners? I wear sandals. Re- you hike in sandals? I backpack in sandals with a 40-pound backpack on what? my What? Yeah. In fact, I'm really disappointed, and I don't know what I'm going to do. Mural made the best backpacking sandal on the market. They were phenomenal. Yeah. And I finally have wore them out. I've got, I don't know, pretty close to 3,000 miles on them, and there's no tread left on the bottom of them at all. Wow. And, uh, they were, they were called rock chuckers uh-huh. and, uh, I, I knew the designer and stuff, uh, from mural, um, Cass is his name and they discontinued them for some reason. And I have no, I have not been, I've tried Tevas and all these others and none yep. of them are as nice as that shoe. What about, uh, Chaco's? Um, I've had several pair of those. Uh, they just don't fit my foot right. Yeah, that's the key. That's amazing. So why do you hike in sandals when a nice pair of boots maybe gives you more support? I just, I've always been a sandal guy. And now because I've wore sandals for so long, um, even when I was guiding all the time, you know, I spent 16 years rowing a boat. Oh, wow. I wore sandals all the time then too. And that's how I wet weighted was in sandals. And in those days I wore Tevas all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I did have a pair of Chacos with the felt on the bottom and, and that kind of stuff I wore occasionally, but pretty much I always wore Tevas and, uh, 
it, it, but I've got one foot now that's a half a size bigger than the other one. Oh yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, that's right. That's that's typical. So tell me that. So you got sandals. Then that's your uh, that's your boot. What's your uh, what's your like? Uh, get into the stove. What do you use for a stove? I use a pocket rocket. Yeah, pocket rocket. That's like a butane, tiny, right? Yeah, it's it's tiny. Yeah, yeah. It's the liquid you you know you haul your fuel with. Oh yeah, it's the screw on can. Yeah, the butane. Jeez. Yeah. And then what do you use for your, um, do you have a, like a, a thermo rest or something under your sleeping bag? Uh, I actually use a climate's insulated pad. Oh, they have one too. So it's not a blow up. It's actually a foam. No, it's a blow up. Okay. It is blow up. Yeah. Yeah. But it's insulated. It's really nice. Yeah. They gotcha. make them wide and narrow and I use the really narrow one. And the there other trick is I got the sleeping bag cause I, um, fish tank who, if you look him up on YouTube, I know him really well. Uh, fish tank, uh, has done the Pacific crest trail right now. He's doing the continental divide in, in, uh, two seasons, which I, you know, hiking straight through anymore to me is just, I'd rather split it up and enjoy the hike and carry a fly rod. Yeah. But, right. uh, he uses a quilt and he puts his uh, blow up pad on the inside of the quilt. And I actually bought the large sleeping bag and I put my blow up pad on the inside of the sleeping bag. Oh, that you way you, you, you get less holes in your pad. Uh huh. And it's a lot more comfortable. You don't fall off your pad in the middle of the night. Oh, you don't fall off. Yeah. There you go. Yep. <laughs> That's good. What about a light? What do you use for your light out there? Oh, uh, I use, I use the diamond, the, the rechargeable diamonds. Yeah. Oh, diamond. Yep. Yeah. Black diamond. And, um, and do you do any, uh, trekking poles or anything like that? No, I don't because I, I always walk around. I usually have uh, two SLRs with me. Most of my friends think I'm crazy. They all start out with a base weight of a pack of between 12 and 15 pounds. And I start out with 12 to 15 pounds of camera gear before I get to my Oh, wow. Stuff. Yeah, that's right. Are you a Canon camera person? Um, no, I'm a, I'm a Nikon. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Well, the final thing I'm going to ask you here on this gear list, this is good. I always uh, love getting this is what's your luxury item. If you're in the back country, the one thing that maybe you don't have to have, but you love to have, um, could be your camera, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what I was going to say. It'd be my cameras. Yeah. Cause they mean more to me than anything. I mean, everything else is just pretty basic. Now a quick break for a word from our sponsor. Fly Fishing Film Tour is back. Don't miss this year's uh, 2022 F3T as it returns to theaters near you. Lots of good stuff uh, this year. As always, uh, there's been a little hiatus uh, from what we've had going on, obviously. So I think everybody's excited to get back out and watch some of these events. Uh, I'm sure... Uh, based on your venue, things might be uh, a little bit different, but uh, I'm excited to get out myself. It's been a few years, at least a couple, since I've been to this one. So we're gonna we're gonna be heading out and checking out the action. We've had a few guests on of late. Uh, Yaku Lucas is one I can think of, and a few others I know that have some films out there. So I'm excited to see what everybody shared, and I'm excited to share the excitement with you. They are back, so uh, check them out. Uh, you can head over to wetflyswing.com slash F3T to find a show near you and get some inspiration and dose of super goodness today. I'm in for it. This year is going to be the big year for trips, so uh, if you can, check it out. Get some inspiration. Uh, flyfilmtour.com. Let's do this. Okay, back to the show. And then what about your rod? So if you're going on a trip in the backcountry, how much stuff are you just putting in a little a little pack rod or are you bringing like the float tube and everything else? No, I don't bring the float tube. Uh, that's too heavy. That's an yeah. extra 10 pounds. That's too much. Uh, yeah. That's, that's way too much. Uh, no, I usually, I usually throw in uh, two fly rods. Um, they'll both fit in one tube. Uh-huh. And lately I've been backpacking with the, uh, the Snowby um, Prestige One Weight and the Snowby uh, eight foot three weight. Oh, okay, yeah. So they got yep. So Snowby, yeah. So Snowby has. I'm not even totally familiar. I know we've talked about them over the time, but they've got a bunch of different products. I know they have that killer jacket, right? They they have. Uh, unfortunately, they don't have the jacket anymore. Oh, they got rid of the jacket. I, yeah that that was a manufacturer thing, and and that that's due pretty much because of COVID and supply issues right now. Oh yeah. Which is like, man, if you didn't get one, you really. Anybody that didn't get one really missed out. This was by far the best waterproof down jacket I've ever seen. 
And yeah. the way it was put together, the down never sagged in it. You never had wow. to worry about that. It was yep. a pretty incredible jacket. Now, they are working on a new design with a new manufacturer, and we'll just see where that goes. But uh, their fly rods are, are really nice for the money. And, and that one weight, uh, talk about a fun rod. If you, if you put their distant casting line on it, that one weight will cast 80 feet. Mm. No kidding. Yeah, no kidding. If you've got the room to uh, do a back cast, that thing will lay out there like you wouldn't believe. And yeah. uh, last year I took a trip in August and uh, I went to the upper tailor above the reservoir and I spent the whole day up there and I was catching uh, 10 to 14 inch brown trout all day long on a chubby with that one weight rod and it was a riot. There you go. The chubby is a good fly. It really is. Yeah. And I use the same fly all day. <laughs> yep. There you go. Well, that's, that's good. Uh, what about the, uh, so I, I can't leave you here without getting into the trout leggings. Are you still working with, what's the name of that, that brand? Doug at Cognito Brands. Yes. Yeah. I am still working with that brand. I'm wearing a pair of the, uh, of the trout dream ones right right now. Yeah. Are these compression, uh, what do they be called? Compression leggings? Um, they could be if you bought them a size smaller because they are 15% spandex. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love them. I live in them. Yeah, really. So what, what's so good about for somebody that doesn't ever wear leggings? Why, why would, uh, why would you want those? Cause they're, they're super comfortable. You don't have plumbers crack all day cause they stay up. Oh, right. You don't know. And, yep. and they are, they're just, I've always had the theory. How come women are the only ones that can be dressed comfortably? Yeah. I mean, leggings are yeah. awesome. They're awesome. I, I think it might be because guys are a little embarrassed of, uh, you know, showing their package out there. That might be part of it. What do you think? Yeah, that could be, but I don't, I don't worry about it. What I find kind of funny is we have a group of, uh, uh, gentlemen, uh, from one of the fishing clubs in, uh, Utah, they buy the leggings and then Doug actually has boxers too, Yeah, which I really they're they're nice. They're just too slick for me. They fall down. I don't care for them. But the guys will buy the leggings and then buy the boxers in a different style to wear over top of their leggings while they're out wet waiting. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. But they're comfortable. That's the bottom line. They're comfortable. They, they're, are they warm? Is it like wearing a pair of um, like warm, like long johns? Um. Yeah, they would be. Yes, totally. Yeah, so it's the same thing. So basically it's like you're wearing, it could be like a long john essentially too. Yeah, it could be. That's a good thing. So that, that's a good, because I definitely wear, I like the long john, especially in the winter. So these things, and, and what is the material? Is it a, it's not wool? No, it's a uh, spandex and I don't know what else is in it. I guess I ought to update myself and know, cause I'm actually, yeah. I'm doing four shows for Doug this year. So. Oh yeah. Talk about that, uh, Tom, real quick. I, I'm curious. So, uh, on the shows you have, I know we're, by the time this goes out, I think one of them or they'll already be going, but what, what do you have coming up here? Um, I'll be in Denver. Uh, I believe that's the 13th of February that starts. And then the next weekend, I'll be in New Brothels, Texas for the Trout Unlimited Fly Fishing Show. And the weekend after that, I will be, I believe it's Mesquite for the uh, Fly and Brew Fest. I'll be oh, wow. booth there. And then into March, I'll be at ITDF in, uh, in Salt Lake. That's right. And I think I'll see, uh, I'd love to get to Denver. I'm not sure if I could make it, but definitely IFTD, I'll be there. What, what do you think when you go to those shows, what is your most, um, you know, what do you love most about going to those shows? Um, just interacting with the people. Yeah. Um, I'm a, I like to talk, which, you know, so, yeah. you know, yeah. I just, I just love seeing everybody and talking to everybody and reconnecting with old friends and guys I used uh -huh. to ride with and, you know, things like that. I mean, Denver is always a great one because I get to see Dave Blackburn and, you know, and some of the guys that I worked with for years and mm -hmm. those 16 years I used to row a boat and, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it's just nice to connect with everybody. That's right. When you go there, you know, quite a few, I mean, like percentage wise, what do you think? How many people, when you go there, do you, I mean, obviously there's new people always coming in, but do you know quite a few of the folks there? Yeah, I usually know somewhere between 50 and 100 people. Yeah. Yeah, that's always the – I always remember that about this, and that's always the people, you know, listen, again, we've been kind of on a – you know, I think we've mixed it up a little bit here today on, uh, you know, talk a little business, a little bit of everything. But um, for me, you know, IFTD, I mean, that was where we met, right? 
back yes, in I think, 2019, 2020. And that's the power. It just shows you this is the power of, you know, with all the Zoom calls and everything, um, there's nothing that uh, still, right, that kind of takes over from doing the in-person because the connection we made, we probably wouldn't be doing this episode if it wasn't for that. Same with some other people I met there. So does that feel like that's probably the most powerful thing? Um, yes, I totally agree. 100%. Yeah, that's it. You know, and I've been doing the shows for a while. Do you remember the Ed Rice shows? Uh, uh, Ed Rice, I do. Was he the, uh, was this the Western stuff or what was, I, I know the name. Yeah, this was the Western stuff out of Portland. And then oh, yeah. the one in California, yeah. it was the big one. Yeah. Yep. Desto or whatever it was back then. And yeah. So that was it. So it was Ed Rice before it was the, whatever they call him now, because there are still shows that are not the fly fishing shows, but they're the, you know, there are, there is still one in Portland. And I think there's some in Washington, right? Right. Yeah, there is. But they're not quite as big. I mean, the fly fishing show with um, Chuck uh, Ferimsky and, and, you know, and the gang, which I'm hopefully getting Chuck on soon as well. But, uh, but those are the, you know, I mean, obviously they're more, um, well, they got Denver, not as much on the West. Uh, although I guess they do have the Pleasanton and then I think maybe, do they do one up in Seattle as well? Um, yeah, it was Linwood, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So those are kind of the big, and that's why Denver is because it's kind of the biggest show in the country. Would you say that, or at least one of them? Um, yeah, well, it's, it's always our biggest show for sales by far. It, it usually does more than double of what all the other shows do. Oh, it does. No kidding. So when you go in there, when you're setting up your booth and at the Denver show, are you going to be in a booth with somebody else or how are you doing that? Um, yeah, it'll just be us in the booth. And, um, is that Cognito? Yeah. With Cognito. Yeah. Gotcha. So you get your booth and so you're going to move some inventory there. Oh yes. We'll move a lot of inventory. That's it. That's it. And then, and then you sit there and I mean, I want to get there and I, I'm going to, I'm going to work on it because if I can get there, I'll probably just be moseying around connecting with people because I mean, compared to say, compare that to IFTD and IFTD obviously is it more business related, but how many brands are, are there just an equal amount of brands at both events? Um, usually there is. You know, and these will be doing a little differently if uh, any listeners out there have never seen a copy of Tail Magazine or Strung Magazine uh, in the Cognito booth at these four shows, I will have free magazines for the taking in those booths. Oh, good. Okay. And that's your other, do you want to shed any light on what you have going with Tail or Strung or any of your other partners, you know, today? Well, Tail and Strung, I guess I'd like to like highlight on those. Um, they're definitely a boutique uh Strung is an upland uh, hunting, big game, and uh, freshwater fly fishing magazine. Um, it's it's definitely a coffee table quality. It's actually printed a little larger than uh, most magazines are printed. Um, it has an excellent reach. It's uh, great writers. It's just a, it's an awesome it's an awesome value. Yeah, and tail is the I mean it's pretty much the. The lead, I mean, it's, is it the only uh, saltwater mag right now, print mag? Yeah, it's the only saltwater print mag. And we even do uh, articles and features on Eastern Europe. And that's, that's kind of how the guys from Denmark came to us because we do, we do articles over there on, on sea run, sea trout and, and stuff like that. And uh, so they came to us about doing a hosted trip just because of our exposure in Eastern Europe. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Okay. So, so yeah, you got a bunch going on. I mean, when you look at the next uh, kind of year out or so with what you have going, wh- how do you think it's going to change between what, you know, if you talk now versus a year from now, how would we be talking differently? What, what do you have coming up? Um, I think differently um, with, uh, I'm opening, opening a uh, media company just to write SEO content mm-hmm. for uh, companies and I will have a group of writers. I'll, I'll be involved, but I won't be as much hands-on as I am. And I'm hoping to actually have somebody trained to be able to do social as good as I can. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I hope to be out doing more hosted trips and fishing more. A little more upland bird so hunting. The trips are going to be big, exactly, <laughs> and some bird hunting. What, what is it? Give us a little rundown on, your, um, on a couple of tips for like social media, if somebody was listening now and they're struggling, they're getting maybe just a, maybe they're not even getting any new followers. What would you tell them in the next say month they could do to, to increase what they have going? To really increase and get things going on social is like it says it's social. You've got to be social. You just can't 
put up a posting and uh, and walk away and think that people are going to follow you, engage with you. In fact, there's um, oh, let me see if I can find this really quick. Uh, there's an interesting uh, statistic out there about how long a post lasts on each platform. Oh, right. Uh, you know, um, like you take Twitter, you put a post up on Twitter, it lasts 15, 20 minutes, but every time it gets retweeted, that adds another 15 to 20 minutes of its exposure. Right. Yeah. And, I, and I've built a network with people where stuff will get reposted up to 20 times over a couple of days. So that means that post on Twitter would last 400 minutes, uh, you know, right. per post, which is actually quite a bit. Yeah. You can reach a pretty big audience where you take um, Instagram, a post will last 48 hours on Instagram. A uh, post on Facebook only lasts about five hours, but the reach on Facebook is so pathetic. That's right. I um, pay. You know, I don't even worry about getting followers on Facebook no, anymore. No. Yeah, Facebook's more about the, uh, the Facebook group. It's more about engaging, right, creating a community sort of thing. As Yeah, that kind of thing. But it's really getting in and, you know, spend, you know, everybody thinks this is free. Yeah, you can post, put your ad out there, blah, no. blah, blah. But that's that's all it is. You've got to engage. You've got to go in and like other people's stuff, create a conversation with them, you know, tell them what you think of things, give them an idea. But, you know, bring value to the community. That's awesome. Just don't sit there on your duff and put something out and think everybody's going to love you for it. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I love that. And then, and then what about Twitter? Because Twitter, um, I definitely like Twitter, but it seems like maybe it's not a, as hot for the fly fishing space. What's your take on Twitter? Um, actually, I think it's actually on the fly fishing space. Um, it's actually over the last four months, I've seen a significant change. Mm. You've seen some more like, engagement, more, in, or what, what's been the change? A lot more engagement, and all of a sudden, there's a, a lot more new users or people that had gone silent are back doing things yeah. because the engagement has gone up. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and I think Twitter, yeah, I don't know. I've always liked it, you know, and I mean, it's easy to see. I mean, it's obviously a lot different than Facebook and, uh, and Instagram, and yeah. Well, and I went over and I created a Getter and a Gab account as well. What's that? Uh, Getter is, uh, Donald Trump's, uh, with whoever else they created this to compete with Twitter. That's oh, really? where Joe Rogan and all those guys have gone. And then Gab is the kind of the same thing, but you know, I, all this stuff, I, I take it all with a grain of salt. What about, exactly. What about, um, what's the other one that's been pretty hot? Uh, not, not Twitter. What, what's the other big one out there? I'm drunk. You mean parlor? Uh, no, no, no. It's it's more of an older one. It's more of a standard. It's the one with the short videos, the the dancing. Oh, you mean TikTok? Yeah, yeah. What about TikTok? Are you there? Um, no, I'm not there. Um, just because mostly, you know, I I don't know. I'm doing this SEO program. And yeah. I've been in class. I've had a mentor for a couple of years, and I just don't. The stuff doesn't last long, and yeah. you got to put so much work into it. I've actually got better response out of doing YouTube shorts than I have out of uh, doing out of doing TikTok. Who's the give a shout out to the person, the SEO person that you've been utilizing? Julie McCoy. Yeah, Julie McCoy. I really like her. I mean, That's awesome. I've been doing her classes and programs for a couple of years now. They're they're not cheap. They're yeah. you know they're a few grand a year, but you know you get what you pay for. You know? Yeah. Well, and I totally agree. I think that. Anybody that knows, you know, uh, right, has a business, you you got to pay some money. You know, it's just like doing ads. You know, you've got to, if you're going to grow, you know, you've got to pay to play a little bit. That's kind of the deal. And I think the same thing with building your your knowledge and experience, man. If, you know, if you're not paying for courses every year, right, a certain amount, you're probably not going to be doing as well as you could be. So uh, that's a great tip. Yeah, it, it really is. And I mean, I went out and got all my Google Analytics certificates and, you know, I've been yeah, doing Julie's courses, I guess, two and a half years now. That's awesome. Well, what is the, uh, on Julie's stuff, I know this is crazy because I, I know I have, uh, I kind of do the uh, Neil Patel, follow him, and it's so overwhelming because there's just so much to do. If you wanted to give somebody a tip this month, something they could do that would be, you know, they could just handle maybe an extra hour or two a week. What would you tell them to do on the SEO end? 
I mean, SEO in, um, it's all learning how to write. Oh, really? Or hiring a good writer. So how do you write? So when you write something, let's say, well, I think we talked about this on the last one, but let's talk more, you know, somebody's got a brand, say a fly rod brand they're trying to promote. Maybe it's a new style of fly rod. What would they on their website? So what would they be writing? Do they have to write a certain number of words or a certain number of photos or what, how do they make that good content? A blog ought to be a minimum of 350 words. But if you really want a piece of content that's going to have staying power and have a good ROI, it needs to be, you know, somewhere around 1,500 to 2,000 words. And it really needs to help somebody and help them solve a problem. And your paragraphs ought to not be any longer than 150 words per paragraph. You need to make sure you're using your H1, 2, and 3 tags, mm-hmm. at, you know, for the for each paragraph about, you know, the tags have really got to be a short sentence that's either H2, H3. I prefer to use all H2s. Yeah. That describe what's gonna what you're going to learn in that paragraph. And that's how the algorithms and the search engines work. And if you don't do that, you know, and you got to have X number of, certain percentage of transition words, sentences really ought to not be any longer than 20 words a sentence. Mm -hmm. Uh, The algorithms are really screwed. It's a totally different way of writing where if you're used to writing for magazines or newspapers, that just doesn't cut it. The API structure for the internet does not work. That doesn't work. And and when you talk about, uh, where could we look at some of these posts? Could you go to tail or where would we send them to see kind of how you've done it? Um, I just put one up on Strung, um, which I haven't totally finished, but it does have all the tags in it. And it is mostly correct because, you know, it was published in a magazine first. And, you know, how some of these authors get, I can't change their article too much. Oh, right, right. Who is the, what, what is that article? Is that the bird dog, dog training? No, it's on uh, hunting the, the white birds of uh, winter. It's an Alaskan ptarmigan article. Oh, okay. And it ought to be right up at the front when you go to the blog section on the on the web. Oh, the blog. Yeah, I'm looking at the the front has a cool um, video of, of a hunt. So strung is a mix between hunting and fishing. Yes, uh, fly fishing. Okay, so fly. Yeah, and I see the upland. So click on upland, and that'll give us a um, that'll give us oh gunning the white birds of the winter, right? Gunning the white birds of the winter. That's one I I just finished SEO on. Yeah, yeah. So let's take a look at that. So I'm looking. So you got, yeah, you got a title. You got Jim. I guess Jim McCann wrote that one. Yes, he did. And you got a cool photo, understanding. Then you got your H2s. And then you got, yeah, your content, some good photos. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty standard. I mean, you got basically content. You got content. You got photos. And yeah, really, there's no other multimedia. You don't have any videos or any sort of infographics. But in that one, basically right there, because you have enough words, photos, and stuff like that, it's keyworded. It, that's going to rank. That's going to rank fine. What was the keyword on that one you were going for? Um, the keyword on that was Alaska hunting and uh, ptarmigan hunting. Oh, and ptarmigan. So ptarmigan hunting in Alaska. Yeah, yeah, ptarmigan. Yeah. So if you put that in, that's one of those cool things where you could. I'm not sure how you do it. I'm always. This is my nerdy. You know, we're kind of nerding out on this, but I always look at it like, okay, if I put in my main keyword and I try to find out what you know, you get a certain number of volume. Are you looking at search volume saying I need this thing to be a certain size or what do you look at there? With stuff I write for sales stuff for snow bee and stuff like that. I am well for this type of stuff. It's a little harder to do. Cause I mean, how many people are really looking for ptarmigan hunting in Alaska? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's not as many as it. <laughs> no, that's, uh... Although people are, I mean, I would love to get it. comes back to, it's like, man, I would love to do that trip. I've never done it. I, I've, I would too, but I, I'm betting that only 300 searches a month. It's 140. 140. Okay. So you know that. So you're, you you know your stuff. I'm looking at my, I'm looking at Uber, you know, suggest here and it's like, okay, it's 140, which is definitely, I mean, I'll go for 140 keywords because they're easier to rank for. Oh yeah, they are. Well, that's even like fly fishing apparel. Yeah. That's only searched for 720 times a month. Oh, wow. You know? wow. You know, so that's a top for where if you take uh, outdoor apparel and hiking clothes, those are in the thousands. Oh yeah. Well, I'm looking at strung now, the keywords, these are some of the top keywords that strung's ranking for. And like, I don't even know what this means. Dingo hunting, DIY doll sheep hunt Alaska number one. Uh, dingo hunting is an Australian article we wrote. Oh, okay. There you go. And then um, 
then there's one big one uh yeah it's just there's a, it's a mix fishery magazine is, is ranking in the top 10 so i don't know this is the nerdy uh, uh seo stuff which is really important right if you want to get your stuff to grow you got to kind of do it yeah I, I find it now the one you're using that system i've never used that i use sem rush i used mods for a little while but uh i switched to sem rush yeah, this is uh, Uber suggests is Neil Patel's. He's it's similar. I think it just doesn't have quite the the detail on the super nerdy stuff. It's more this one's more for the general the general public. So yeah, but he's a uh, he's got some good info. So I'll have to go check him out. Yeah, I've- yeah, check it out. Check it out. It's got a pretty good. He's got a pretty good um, uh, paid thing. That's not that's not too bad. And um, but I, I'm struggling. My goal here this year is to get. Um, to get uh, Dom on and taking over this SEO because I just don't have time. You know what I mean? It's just the, like you said, like who has time to spend four hours a day other than like you, right. That you have, that's what you do. Yeah. And I'm going to have to finagle that a little bit. This summer is going to be a little tricky because I'm actually going to be, uh, um, doing fly tying and, uh, oh, yeah. working a, a lodge fly shop in West Yellowstone this summer right on the banks of the Madison, but no internet there. You're working in a fly shop. Yeah, yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be working at Jim's uh, Flyco at uh, Campfire Lodge this summer. Oh, really? This summer you're going to be working in in Jackson Hole? Uh, no, I'll be in West Yellowstone. Yeah, similar, right? It's all it's all around the. Yeah, I always think of I always put those together, but I know they're different, right? That's the funny thing is that West Yellowstone is is quite a bit different than Jackson. Yeah, it is totally different. <laughs> totally different. I know. I know. Totally. That's funny. For those that don't know, they haven't been through there. It's uh it's an amazing spot because I mean, we were just there this last year and it was like, wow, I mean, you got to plan your stuff out. Otherwise you're getting trapped in a freaking two hour line to get into the park and oh yeah, or get out of the park or get or, out of the park. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I really think about what I'm doing when I go in and out of the park and where the, where I go hiking and I'll be doing backpacking trips down there. I'm going to do some three dayers and oh, good. I'm gonna, yeah, my goal is to hop on the continental divide trail with one of my friends coming through and uh hmm. he had to be montana early this year so yeah. looking forward to getting out doing a couple hundred miles with him and uh that's cool yeah i would like to get um bob jacklin uh he's definitely a name that keeps coming up i need to get him on on the show yeah i was i went in and saw bob a couple of times this last year i've been a long i hadn't seen bob in for probably 15 years or better and you know and i used to go in there well I used to say, well, Pat Barnes is who taught me how to tie flies, and that's who Bob bought the shop from and stuff. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, you got so you got a connection there. But you're not in – you're up in uh, Colorado, right? No, I'm in Montana. Oh, you are. Why did I think you were in – so where, where are you at in Montana? Oh, just outside of Livingston. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so you're – damn, I, I don't know why I was thinking about that the whole time. I guess that's because well, of the I was Denver in stuff. Colorado. I, I, when I packed up and left, I left for good. <laughs> oh, so this recent thing, when you took your trip, you left for good. I left for good. I didn't know where I was going to settle. In. Are you serious? So you, so you were in Colorado. You were like, okay, I'm going to pack things up. And like, literally you packed it up in a, um, like, uh, what a storage unit, uh, in a storage unit and filled my, uh, little Jimmy up and, uh, my four by four and hit the road. Yeah. And you hit the road and you're like, okay, no turning back. And I'm, I'm heading out. And, and then how did you know where you were stopping? Or where you were, where you're putting up, like where you live. I didn't know until uh, August of that year. Till August of what year was that? Of uh, 2020. Oh, 2020. Yeah. So it's so it's been it's been now almost uh, yeah a year and a half. So so you didn't know until August until you, what you roll into Livingston. And you're like, hey, this looks like a good place to stay. Um. Yeah. And well, there's there's a backstory too. We've the family's had a house here. Uh, since uh, 1915. Oh, gotcha. And nobody lived in it for 37 years. Oh, wow. So you're you're like doing some remodeling too now? Oh, frick. New furnaces, new plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> now, is this on the banks of a of an amazing river? Uh, no, it isn't. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay, as I was say, because it sounds like maybe you have another lodge. Uh, Livingston, right, is a pretty, what's the, in Livingston, what is the, uh, what are the hot, what's the hot river there? Oh, you got the Yellowstone, and then oh. you got all the Spring Creeks. You got Dupuis and Andersons, and uh, yeah. But you have the Yellowstone. You actually have the Yellowstone, which is crazy. I actually, have the Yellowstone. Yeah, totally. Gotcha. Okay. Well, you've had some major. The last year and a half for you has been some. Um, I mean, does it feel like it's been a, a whole change in your world, or is this like no big deal? Um, it's been a change, but no big deal. Um, I was ready for change. 
So there you go. There you go. Nice, man. Well, well, I'm excited to see what you have coming. And I think we're going to be hopefully working on something in the next year. And uh, it's always fun. This has become kind of, we don't do these business um, episodes too often, but I think you're, you're kind of becoming maybe the, you know, my go-to uh, business, uh, you know, however, however you want to call it. I'm not going to call you a guru, but I will say, I think you're ahead of a lot of people on some of this stuff. So, um, so yeah, maybe we'll try to get you on again and do a follow-up and see where you're at. Yeah, no, that sounds good. Yeah. All right. And we got to do it when I get back from Alaska and I can oh, talk yeah. about steelheading. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's do that. Yeah, you got that Alaska trip coming. I'm interested to hear. And whenever we can tell, when we, if we can eventually break away the top secret uh, classified level, we, we will do that. And maybe we'll, we'll get people into a trip out there to see what you have going. Yeah, exactly. Well, we'll have enough videos and photos. I think when you see this stuff, your, your jaw will drop oh, if yeah. you're into steelheading. Well, it's interesting you mentioned steelhead because, you know, right now, you know, the West Coast and really around the Pacific Rim, um, you know, Canada, B.C., I mean, steelhead numbers have plummeted, right? We're seeing, uh, you know, in the Columbia Basin, one of the lowest uh, returns in the history of record keeping. Right. Uh, some of that's for summer steelhead. But um, but yeah, so there's some stuff going on right now. And and so it definitely is good to hear there's still some places that are that are doing OK. I think um, Kamchatka is another place that is you know is doing fine so anyways i I, it's good to hear i think we're going to come out of it it's just going to be a little a little bit of time and 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 so but yeah i want to hear how that trip goes yeah definitely i'd love to get you on one of these too oh yeah no i'm I'm coming i'm i gotta figure this out for you so uh thanks again for bsing with me for uh for some time here tom this has been fun and uh yeah we'll we'll catch up with you and keep in touch online all right sounds good dave i'll uh, talk to you later so there you go. If you want to find all the show notes, all links, and everything else we covered today, head over to webflyswing.com slash 294. 294 will do the trick today. Uh, also, uh, webflyswing.com slash subscribe to get notified when the next episode drops. And we have one coming up, I believe, tomorrow. This is, uh, this is going to be another three-episode week, so I'm excited um, that we're climbing into a whole nother uh, spot, another space in the podcasting uh, and what it takes to do this. So we're, we're getting three in today. And as we go, we're probably going to see a few more of those. We're, we're not quite, uh, I'm not saying we're at a daily podcast level yet, but um, uh, we're working our way there. So, uh, so check it out. Uh, we're going to be doing some big stuff coming up here, including some new types of episodes. And we got some big trips coming up here some big giveaways, some hosted stuff. Uh, So if you want to get out and connect with me on the water, this is going to be the year to do it. We're going to have some giveaway. I'll I'll be uh, giving a shout out to that. Like I said, um, a good place that you can uh, check out what we have going. So I'm going to let you get out of here, let you get to that next episode and want to thank you again for all of your support and supporting the community, the podcast and helping share that word with one new listener. Uh, each week if we can one person that's all we need if every person in this audience right now out there listening if we all shared um, one episode from the week or from the month uh, we would t- double we would do some crazy stuff so so help it out let's do this and uh, and I will thank you right now in advance and look forward to seeing you on the next episode thanks for listening to the wet fly swing fly fishing show For notes and links from this episode, visit wetflyswing.com.